Hey, hey, buddy. Oh, look, those are your people. Oh, you don't care. You don't care at all. But I care, as always. Seems like I always say that. Anyway, guys, it's Robert Earl out here at the Eco Ranch Sustainable Living Educational Center in far west Texas, along with Cascade the Wonder Dog, who we wonder what his purpose is around here, and Sarah, the world's ugliest chihuahua, which chihuahua and dachshund mix. That's what makes her so ugly. Sweetest dog in the world, ugliest stink. Anyway, welcome to my video about how I'm going to heat the greenhouse. Now, for those of you that have come by because you followed the keyword and aren't familiar with me, perhaps you have the patience of a millennial, which means you run out of patience after 144 characters. You might want to skip ahead about five minutes. Uh, because I'm going to do a lot of talking here at the very beginning and if you've got millennial patience You'll want to skip ahead, but you skip ahead you learn you miss learning a few things Okay, here I am with the core from the gas hot water heater. This is a 40 gallon core. Here's the chimney pipe It's just a pipe a hole down the center the water jacket around the whole thing uh, the burner would sit up underneath the bottom and do its thing. Heat the water up, the water gets hot, the insulation and everything around here, did everything you're familiar with. I stripped all of that stuff away. I'm left with the tank. Now, the tank is perfectly good to use like this. I'm going to actually take and paint this tank black with a, um, hopefully black will absorb some of the heat in the daytime as well, but also just to make it look a little bit better. The only color I can get uh, locally that's a heat resistant paint uh, is going to be black, so it's going to be a, a, a semi-gloss black color. But anyway, we're going to paint this, and then I'm going to assemble it and show you the assembly. I'll tell you now what, what I'm getting, because, you know, it's a cold day today. I will be in different clothes, and with or without the jacket, when we finish this, because I have to wait until I go into town, which is a 130-mile round trip, to buy the paint that I need to spray paint this. I need to get the fittings, and I need to get a turkey fryer. Now you can get um, um, a wok burner heating element. I just looked at turkey fryers and that turkey fryers, my best, uh, my best bet, it's got a little stand like about that and then you know a big pot full of that oil that, that explodes when you dunk a turkey and kills like 980 people a year. But one of those is what I need for the bottom. This will sit on top of it and then um, when we fire up the, uh, the burner, the water that's in here will heat up and then we'll show you later, later in the video, just exactly how we're going to work it. So right now, to start the video off today, which is I think the 20, gosh, I don't know, 29th of, um, 29th of, Jan of December, I think. So it'll be, it'll be a couple weeks before this is done. But anyway, to start this off, this is sanded. Uh, excuse me, this is, uh, yeah, sand. It's sanded, cleaned up, all I have to do is try it and spray it, and then we'll get going. When I get, when I get the paint and that done, we'll have the turkey fryer. We'll go on to step two. Step two will be for you a matter of seconds. For me, a couple hundred bucks in a few days. See you then. Hey guys, well, as you can tell, a couple of days have gone by. I've changed my clothes, I got my hat on because it's a cold morning. Now, cold for us means it's 40 degrees, but hey, this video, you might have already noticed on my introduction, I've chopped it up some. I'm trying to make it a little bit shorter, um, but there's a lot of things I want to cover in here, and there's a lot, always in all my videos, there's always a lot of information, a lot of teaching that comes from this. So if you're one of those millennial uh, device-addicted types, that 288 characters or less, or you just lose all interest, via con Dios, there's plenty of other people out there that'll, that'll meet that. At any rate, I moved out here because it's important when you're doing something new to discuss what didn't work, what failures you've had. I was talking to someone who had just done a, um, a workshop at Michael Reynolds' Earthship uh, um, compound up in Taos, and I was talking about how well what Michael does up there in the high desert doesn't work here. So you, in other words, if you want to build an earth ship here, the earth ship has to be a slightly different design than the ones he has there. There's a lot of things that vary even from here where I'm at 3,200 feet down in Terlingua where there are 2,200 feet. Just a thousand feet makes a difference. And up in Alpine, a 2,000 feet or a, I guess it's 1,500 feet. That makes a difference. 
what I'm getting at is you can't really, you can write a generic book about living off grid or sustainability, but that generic book is just that, generic. You have to do a lot of things differently from re within a few mile area. And then occasionally you fail. And I wanted to talk about failures before I went into the um, this heating system. So hang in there or skip ahead if you're device addicted. Talking about failures. Here's a couple of failures that Debbie and I did. The biggest one we've done is right here. It had plexiglass on it at first. It's a beer can solar hot water heater. The idea was that the black painted beer cans with the PEX pipe going through would heat up and the, and the water was going through so slowly because there were 20, uh, I think there's 20 tubes. So you have one tube coming in like this, splitting into 20 and the 20 are moving like that ever so slowly. In theory, it works great. If you use copper, and please, somebody don't comment about how they work. I know how they work. This one didn't, period. If I had copper, it might um, inside, it might have been different. If I'd have just had black painted copper, it would have been a lot better. Bottom line was, it didn't work real good. Plenty of heat in there, the system didn't work. So after I built all of this to accommodate it, I've got a failure here. Luckily, we're redesigning the kitchen and we're going to tear this whole thing out. But that's failure number one. Here's another failure. I've done a video on this. This is the rocket stove slash water heater slash cooking unit slash incinerator. And all of that works except for the water heater because I made a simple mistake. I thought I had half inch copper tubing and I had 3 8 inch. It needed 3 quarter inch. Well, I would have found that on YouTube. The problem was I didn't have and couldn't afford 3 quarter inch, so I made do with the 3 8 Fail. It won't heat water. And as I found out, heating water, heating your domestic hot water, especially in a pressurized system, is one of the most difficult things we have to deal with in this environment. Failure number three, up on the roof, that direction there, let's see, right there, that's north. These things face that way, so they face essentially north-northwest. I put 400 feet of poly irrigation pipe up on the roof hoping to get some kind of heat during the day. I knew I wouldn't get all the heat because I wasn't facing south. I didn't get much at all. Fail! Hey, we get failures. They happen. And that's the point in a failure is it's okay to fail once. You start failing two and three times, you're like Homer Simpson going, go, go, go. You don't want to do that. You don't want to if I try to edit out the fails for you guys, you're going to do them too. You will fail if somebody doesn't show you how you can fail. So I want to be sure that you know. So there's my fails. Let's go see what happened with that hot water heater. Now guys, I have to admit, I finished it, hooked it up, tested it, and had it working before I did the videos. And the reason was, it was far more important to protect these tilapia than it was to have you watch me put each and every piece of this together. If you're smart enough to live off grid, if you're smart enough to live sustainably, you're smart enough to figure out how to screw some pieces of galvanized together. So I skipped that. But let me go over what I've done and what the pieces are here, the components that I have. Um, this is the tank that you saw earlier. All I've done with the tank was I, uh, I got some um, uh, Rust-Oleum high heat uh, uh, paint and spray painted it just so it didn't look ugly because it is here in the middle of the greenhouse. At the moment I've got it hooked to a 30 pound propane tank. I did buy a 100 pounder because this is big and it will use propane and that's just something I'm going to have to, if I have to use it regularly, I'm going to have to buy the propane. Now the next video that I'm posting is going to be of a different heating system for the greenhouse that's supposed to be the main heating system. This one's supposed to be a backup. So this is supposed to be a backup. Propane powered, it means that the temperatures drop dramatically or I had another fail on the system I'm working on. But anyway, here's the tank. All right, let's go through what I did. I ordered, uh, uh, I was looking for a turkey fryer, one of those really dangerous turkey fryer heating elements. And I found at Home Depot, this element here, it's uh, by Gas One, the way they spell it, though it looks like they're saying Gas Only, or Gas Only. 
but it's gas one. It's a 200,000 BTU burner that is adjustable. Right this second, I have the thing set at about 100,000 BTUs. The reason it's at 100,000, this is a 40 gallon tank. So you've got 40 gallons of water in here that you have to heat, so you do need power. A 40,000 BTU burner probably will be a waste of your money, but you could try it. I would recommend spending the extra money. The difference was like $40 between the 40,000 and the 200. For 40 bucks, you're guaranteed success. Saving 40 bucks, you may have a failure. Better to guarantee success. So up top here, this is open. And remember, this is the core of a gas hot water heater, so the center is your fluid sauce. Well, here we're not worried about carbon monoxide or fumes because there is enough air leakage that that stuff gets out. It's a 1,600 square foot building, so we can let the flue gases escape. But what they're doing, that's so hot I can't keep my hands even there for very long. It's going up, it's hitting the ceiling, it's circling around, and Joe the Troll in his mother's basement eating a ham sandwich. No, it's not going to light the wood on fire, so don't, don't tell me it will. But it's going up, it's dispersing, and it's going over, you can't see, but it's going to the, the tops of my um, uh, tomato plants. Tomato plants are 10 feet high, and the very tops were burning because of the cold. Now it won't happen because this will keep the top up there warm enough. This is an off-grid greenhouse. The whole idea is to try to use as much, as much, as little um, electricity as possible and as little propane as possible. Now we can't, you can't help the propane use right here when this is operating. We can make it so we don't have to operate this so much and that's, that's the next video. So, but it's an off-grid system. So what I had to do is I had to tap into water that would flow in here on its own without a separate pump. Well, that was easy. I've already got the pump bringing the water up to the float bed. So I just tapped into that, let gravity bring it down here. I've got a valve here to control how fast the water fills the tank. I can either fill the tank all the way up, shut it off and just leave it and keep 40 gallons of water, or I can have it trickling in, trickling in. I, trickle is, that's a, just a cuter word. I could have it trickling in. It trickles in the end here, which brings the water down and dumps it about here. It, it trickles in, fills up the 40 gallons. Then this is the out. So it trickles in, it gets heated. Here's the out. The out also, this out does not have a valve on it. It simply comes up. I have an old fashioned, uh, it's a tree rice vintage thermometer here. It's a regular mercury thermometer. When I turned it on and I started this portion of the video, it was 40 degrees is what it was reading. It's now reading 76. Uh, and it'll go up to about 130 before I... I, I don't have a, um, um, a pressure relief valve here. Don't have to. We're not under pressure except the pressure that you could get here. Simply comes up to the thermometer and out right away. Unrestricted. This, there's no restriction on the outflow. So it comes out. As a safety measure, I could have probably used text or maybe even CPVC. I went with all galvanized to pull the valves and, and the pecs away from the flame. It's not super hot out here, but at my body, you can see how close I am to the tank, I'm feeling the heat. So I pull it out with galvanized, then I switch here to PEX because it's just easier to work with PEX. PEX is very forgiving on bending. It comes out unrestricted and goes directly into the tank, out of the pond. Now I put a T down there, and in the bottom here, I have another out with a valve. So the idea is if I get this full, and let's say I want to bring this water up to 160 degrees, then I can open it. I have to open both so I have air coming in and water going out. And I can dump the whole 40 gallons in at 160 degrees to keep the whole plate thing up. Ideally what I do is I leave a trickle coming out of there. Paint this full now. There's a trickle coming out from um, here. Sorry, I did it backwards. Coming in and just a dim overflow here. This is just a little trickle coming out. That trickle is coming out and now at 78 degrees. And if I leave that trickle going while I'm heating this water up, it'll heat the water up some to get this up. The main thing is 
that while it's heating, I'm putting air in the greenhouse, I'm heating a little bit of water, but I've got the 40 gallons for when I do the dump in the, the whole system is 4,000 gallons. When I dump 40 gallons in here, it raises the temperature of the, um, of the entire system by about one degree. And I'm going to leave this on now because I'm trying to bring the, um, the water up to 70 degrees today. It hasn't been 70 for two months, so we're going to bring it up to 70 today, so I'm going to leave this on and run it. Now, did it work? Yes. This works, and it works great. You guys, if you're looking to heat a greenhouse or something where you don't have to worry about fumes and monoxide, this is a great way to do it. The 40 gallons will sit here and emanate heat out. Or you could vent it to the outside and you would have a heater in your house as well as domestic hot water. This will heat an entire room because look, you've got 40 gallons of water in a cast iron tank. And you can get fancy and roll fins on it. And, you know, let your brains take it from there. But as far as a greenhouse heater, fantastic, great idea, including the 100 gallon or 100 pound propane tank. I have a little over $300 invested in this heater. Most of that's in the tank and in this burner. The rest is the plumbing. Little, about $300 invested in it to heat a 1,600 square foot building. Not too bad. That's the heater. Uh, if anyone has questions about building it or wants to learn a little bit more, maybe in the details when they're trying to engineer one, you can try to contact me privately and I'll email back and forth with you to help you out on this or anything out here. Uh, if not, then I hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned and watch for the other videos. The next video is the solar hot water system for the greenhouse. And we're going to see if that's, is it going to be a win or a fail. This one, probably one of the biggest wins I've ever done in this um, out here. And it's one of the first things that's my design only. Everything else out here is stuff I've gathered from you guys out at YouTube. Uh, or books. But this was my design and it worked and I'm really happy about it. So guys, until the next video, which I'm going to start today, it's Robert Earl out here at the Eco Ranch Sustainable Living Educational Center in the Greenhouse saying see you later.